Hey everyone and welcome back to Remember This Tech. Today I'm going to try to resurrect an old PC, a Socket 5 PC. Now those were the sockets that typically the first generations of Pentium processors uh, worked on. Um, Pentium 75 and some AMD processors as well. So what am I going to do? I'm going to try to resurrect a PC that was cheap and mainstream and a lot of people had back in the day as their first PC. I'm gonna see if I can fix it and get it running. There's no guarantees in this because it was stripped, had no CPU, no RAM, but it did have drives, uh, power supply, uh, a couple other things. So what is it? It is a Packard Bell. Now, probably some of you out there probably had one of these as your first Pentium PC. I know I had this, not this model, but this type. Um, this one is a Legend 409CDT, and its specifications here, if we can zoom in a little bit here, was a 75 megahertz Pentium processor, one gig hard drive. That was pretty big back in the day. Um, eight meg of RAM. Can you imagine? Ah, eight meg of RAM back in the Pentium 75 days. It really wasn't a lot, but it was okay and it did fine, especially if you're running Windows 95. It says PCI local bus video, PCI local bus IDE hard drive interface. It came with a 14 kilobits per second modem. Woo. Quad speed CD ROM. That's interesting, eh? Um, and a few other things full duplex speakerphone, uh, fast media keyboard access, 16 bit SRS 3D amplifier stereo sound system, MPEG full motion video playback, and one whole meg of video <laughs> memory. And uh, it was designed for Windows 95 um, and a bunch of software titles, whatever. But I don't know if the CD-ROM works. Um, and when I got it, I don't know if you can see, it didn't have a riser board. And what's particular about these old Packard Bells is it uses a riser board. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. And you need that riser board because there's there's only RAM slots, a CPU slot, a riser board slot on this board, um, and a few other things. There, it did have built-in slots for ISA or PCI um, in the day. So this is a riser board. Slides into the motherboard here, connection here. And this riser board is for Packard Bell, and I hope it works because I bought it. It's supposed to be old, new stock. Um, and it has three ISA and three PCI. It's a Packard Bell part number 52F53 Rev C. Now it does fit in there. I tried it. And this is step one of many. To making sure that or seeing if I can even get this to work so what happens is that you're basically gonna put this in like this into the board like this right it slots in there like that um, there used to be or there should be a way to hold this here but there's not and then the cards itself I'll go like this. <clears throat> See? And then it's just the back of the PC, and then it'll act like the motherboard itself when you put in those cards. Um, and then the cards will come out and put in the slots, and which look like normal slots, and they basically are. But that's what that is. This is a Socket 5 CPU, and it had. It doesn't have a CPU. So I bought a cheap, a cheaper Intel Pentium CPU. 
Yep, yeah, that's uh, depending on CPU. And technically, this board should support up to a 166 Pentium, but this is a Pentium 133. Uh, if, if everything's working, power supply I haven't even tested because I don't have an AT power supply tester, but that's what it took as well. And we can go on from there. Now to go with that, um, a few other things were needed because it had nothing. And in these old Packard Bell systems, if you ever own one, they had these long um, ISA cards and it had on there a modem, right? A dial-up modem. And typically it incorporated your sound card as well. So it had these wonky drivers because it like, um, you know, had both on that same card. So that's gone and I don't even care. I mean, I'm not trying to rebuild this from scratch, but it'd be nice to have the authenticity of the true build, but I don't have that. So in part of its place, since we're not gonna be using a modem, I have a ISA Sound Blaster Vibra 16 card. And it has a game port and your audio in and out. That is gonna be the sound card we're going to use in this build. I have 72 pin, fast page, 60, I think it's 60 nano or 70 nanosecond uh, RAMs. And these are 16 meg each. That is quadruple what this system came with. And I'm not even sure if this board supports 16 meg sticks or not. This is what I've got, and we're going to hopefully slot these in there. And the other portion of this build is we don't have a hard drive, but we do have a floppy present as well. I'm going to test that to see if it works once we get the system up and running. It's a verbatim 2 gig uh, compact flash drive, and we have here an IDE to compact flash adapter card reader. And it's kind of nice that that it'll just slide right in here. And if you want to try a different OS, you know, just slide it right in there and boot it up on a different one. And this is uh, natively pinned to support in the way these flashcards are uh, to support. Like they kind of mimic old IDE drives. So theoretically, it should work fine. And then maybe on this video, I don't know, we'll see how it works out. I may go and try to do Windows 95. We've got my trusty Logitech PS2 keyboard. And this was also new old stocks. And we got this generic PS2 mouse. This system does have what, what appears to be onboard floppy controllers and IDE controller. So we're gonna test that out make sure they work. We might have to replace the CMOS battery more than likely. And they got this socket, socket seven cooler here and it should fit on that Pentium chip, I hope. And if not, I've got a, a, a couple other coolers that I'm gonna try. And I'm just gonna try to turn it on and see if it even recognizes the CPU and if everything's working. If the power supply doesn't work, I've got to pull out a backup AT power supply from an old machine that I'm working on in tandem to this. Guess this is the best view for us here. And uh, crack this open here. And don't force it because, you know, these old pins and stuff. You don't want to bend it, but that's how it fits. And it's see how like big that is, and then just clamp it in place. This needs a cooler. Cooler Master Socket 7 should work. Might not work. Might have to change out the clip though. You know, you're trying to find parts for these old systems, and one of the clips or clamps is broken off on there. And uh, it's just like pain in the ass to find parts nowadays. I had to get leverage under there without this slipping though, you know? 
Okay, it is on. We've got a limited amount of uh, connectors for the uh, four pin Molex, so we're gonna use this one here for the CPU fan header, and then we are going to move some of this stuff out of the way because we are going to put um, the RAM in here. Right here, there's four slots. The way these RAM sticks go in, they go in at an angle like so. See how they're kind of angled? And then basically when the connectors are there, you just press and move it forward and they kind of lock in place. They have a little retention clip and that's it. That is it. Oh, it's at a total angle like that. Wow, I hate this design, I hate it so much. It goes at like a crooked angle. Look at that, stupid, stupid. We have a Western Digital branded card. It's a, called a Formosa. Western Digital 90C30 LR card is a ISA card with a VGA out. It said it, w it worked on the eBay and I don't know, I haven't tested it. And I have a backup card we'll use if not. Um, the riser card here, and you're gonna slide it in here, and there should be a mounting thing, but there's not. Um, somebody unceremoniously did some damage to this system, so. The last component before we do a test boot would be the um, flashcard adapter to the IDE. And pin one should be on the red stripe, if I remember correctly, I don't know. So we just kind of have to test it, you know. So we're going to test this power on for this unit. We got the CPU in, we got the fan hooked up for it. We're using onboard video that came with the unit. Um, yeah, it's one meg, but it should be fine for a test. Oh, I got video out, we got video out. The Packard Bell somewhat lives, everyone. It's almost alive. All right, it doesn't know what the uh, CPU is here. It doesn't know, you know, the multiplier, you know? So I'll have to look at the jumpers and see if there's something on the board to set it. But 100 megahertz is better than the 75 that it had. So let's go to setup and see if we can see what's in there. We're in the BIOS and we, I noticed that uh, system time's hosed and so is the uh, date. So nine times out of 10, unless this wasn't turned on since 1988. I'm probably gonna pop out the battery and just give it a new one. Otherwise, this is going to be a short uh, setting here and the fact that we're gonna to have to redo it all over again. Shadow cache, memory shadow, enabled, enabled. Boot sequence A, then C. 640K of system memory. But look, it has extended memory. C's the RAM, 39 meg. Plug and play OS, no, not really. Large access. If you have DOS, select DOS. If you have Novell, select Unix or Novell Netware. Other if you are installing new software and the drive fails. Now it's not gonna save the changes, even though it says it did, but it won't. Why, because the ZMOS battery is probably dead, so. Let me shut this down and replace the battery. That's a minor win. The uh, system is half running. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's onboard video and I tested an ISA card and it didn't work. Um, either the card died and was dead from eBay when I bought it. So let me pop out the old uh, battery. I think it's a 2032. Set the BIOS. And yeah, it's going to have an issue because the battery on the BIOS is dead, but I can't replace it because it's soldered into its fixture. It uses a regular coin battery like this, but you can't replace it. All right. Well, that sucks.
we're going to be revisiting Windows 95 with the plus pack features. It was revolutionary back in the day and we want to see how it looks and how it fares in 2023. So without further ado, let's get right into it and start loading Windows 95 on this Packard Bell. Let's go! So we're installing to the two gig drive, which is a uh, compact flash on an IDE adapter. So let's see how this will work and if it will work at all. Fingers crossed. End user license. Great. Collect information by your computer. It's going to select C Windows. That's normal, right? Oh, that was quick. This is pretty zippy, I don't know about you, but I mean, I want to do custom. Sometimes if you didn't do custom or you didn't select a lot of the th things in here, you didn't get everything you needed installed on your machine. I'm gonna do that. Oh no. Oh no, what's the OEM key? No, no. So I took my key and RTT. Let's do this. Um, yes, I guess. Look for all hardware devices, sure. I don't have a sound card installed yet, but I will after this, so kind of wish I'd done this, but I didn't know if this was gonna work, so. Let's let this go. I have no idea, but this is going rather fast in my mind. Granted, there wasn't a ton to Windows 95, but it had, you know, built-in driver support for basic, you know, audio and, uh, you know, maybe some dial-up modems and some basic video cards and such. Granted, the compact flash is pretty fast compared to what a hard drive it would have had back in the day. Well, I guess it's taken some time. Be interesting to see what it can detect and what it can't. And then once you were in here, past that stage, you had to select your components. And normally this will have one of one, accessories will have five of eight. And if you went in here and press details, it would uh, give you more that you haven't selected and you'd have to select them with um, Let's see, I think there's a way to select or install all or something. Yeah, you have to click on it. Like, if it's highlighted and it's gray like that, right there, then, or disk tools for example, but then you click it and click it again, you, it installs all three of three. You see how it changed? Uh, multimedia. Here it's gray, there's three of eight, so we want all. And we want to click it, and it should be 8 of 8 now. Windows messaging. Yeah, I mean, I don't really care about that, but then there was your fax tools, communications, accessories. And you can install these later from within the operating system as well. And it says it's going to take 206 meg. 206. That's a lot. It's, uh, Go next, and we don't have any network components, but we'll just leave this. All right, tried it. Oh, look at that. It detected the video card. That is pretty awesome, right? Keyboard, nobody cares about that. That's, if you can't figure out the keyboard, then forget about it. Doesn't know the monitor because, yeah, it's an LCD. I'm using a VGA on it. All right, so, yeah. That's what we have. Sounds good. Do I want to create a startup disk? Oh, well, that's a good question, right? I mean, you can create a Windows 95 startup disk or DOS once you have the system up and running, but on the startup and the back in the old days, you could create this from a floppy disk right here. And I think our floppy drive is working on this jalopy. The jalopy floppy is not working. 
they had like a little drum when it was like your instead of the hourglass it was the drum for this I guess it has the start menu introduction and the old introduction for how they advertise this operating system was they licensed the music to the Rolling Stones to start me up and that was a huge thing um, and I think they paid three million dollars for that song to use it for advertising and they people stood around the block for the midnight launch to get this operating system just to get <laughs> to get it which was amazing back in that day I mean who would do that but it was a common thing in those days you know they implemented the drag and drop and right click mouse buttons and then Windows 98 went farther with that and kind of built upon it with better driver support uh, plug and play and to say Windows 95 was plug and play well I commonly referred to this operating system as plug and pray and that goes for Windows 98 as well but that's how it was but it was way easier to use better in some respects than you know DOS or Windows 311 MS DOS games run better and more reliable faster video revs up the action in the games you play I'm going to be putting the Sound Blaster Vibra 16 in this system as soon as I can get it done with this install and then we'll see you know if it picks it up and whether or not you know we need to uh, sneaker net some drivers to get it to work and they also introduced Microsoft Exchange client where you could do email and I remember you'd have to set up the email client every time you got like a different um, internet ISP dial-up oh, it was kind of a pain in the butt but it's what you had back in the day you know online email inboxes weren't really a big thing and I think some of these copies later on the C version of Windows 95 came with like Internet Explorer 3.0 as a browser and I remember that like certain installations of you know Windows 95 didn't have it so I always used to have to borrow the installation disk separately for the browser for Internet Explorer 3.0 from my dad's friend because you know try downloading stuff on you know a 9600 baud rate modem back then yeah 90% didn't take the 30 minutes that it said it would, which is good because on a whim, I just started to try to see if this install disk work and I started recording because, oh my gosh, it works, you know, it's starting to work, you know. Right now, this Packard Bell is running with the 100 megahertz Pentium CPU. So I need to tweak the settings for the jumpers to get it to go to 130 megahertz. And the system has onboard video, but we're using the Trident one meg card, so. All right, so we're gonna finish this install. We're done, we're done. Wonder if we'll even boot up though. We don't have a floppy disk, thank you. But we will take out the CD-ROM drive. All right. And then we'll put in the sound card. Let's do that. I can't do video capture on this old jalopy of a machine. We're gonna try to do the best we can with the camera for now. I put in the sound card to see if the operating system picks it up. And it looks like we're starting Windows 95. I wonder if this sound will even come through. There's no sound driver, but. So this is what it looked like to start Windows 95 for the first time back in the day. For many, this was like the, the ultimate uh, experience because they're used to DOS, you know? And maybe it'll detect the ISA sound card, I'm not sure. That would be pretty cool. I'll just tell you that sometimes you had this little thing going for a long time and it didn't do anything back in the day. You just think, oh, it looks like it's doing something. Will it pick it up? Will it help me? Can it help me save the day? No, not usually. At least that was my comic experience with it. 
the operating system was designed to run on a lot slower processor than this, so sometimes it was okay. It was snappy enough, you know? Updating your shortcuts. Updating the start menu and programs. And then it had a help section, which sometimes didn't do much. And this is where you got the same time adjustment, the time zone. And this isn't going to really do much, but... because Why? Because the, the BIOS battery's dead, and I can't replace it without a lot of soldering work, so... Whoa, the sound worked. It picked up the sound card. Wow. So I put in the sound card and it did an auto detect and picked it up. That is cool. It probably had the drivers because it's old as, uh, you know, 386, 486. So let's see how fast this starts up. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. In all its glory on my test monitor. <laughs> uh, sorry I can't capture this with a pass through. Whoa, it's a little loud. Oh, it looks pretty crisp and clean. Oh, so yeah, Internet Explorer 4. How nice. Too bad we don't have a modem or an ethernet card in here. But at least they'll get it set up for when we never connect to the internet on this old machine. Well, that's installed. And it brought with a um, active desktop and a bunch of this junk here. Advertisements for AOL, Warner Brothers, Disney. All right, we're gonna close this taskbar. And then we're gonna do a short overview of the desktop in all its glory and everything that Windows 95 has. The sound is working, the volume is at medium. If you notice here, Outlook Express. Before Outlook was just Outlook for your email, it was Outlook Express and that was your email client. You can configure it with your dial-up and your ISPs and stuff like that. This folder down here has all your online services. AOL, CompuServe, all this old stuff. Prodigy, even the MSN, AT&T. So this is your dial-up and all its glory back in the day. You had this thing called My Briefcase where you can store documents. It says here you can use it to organize your documents, keep up to date. It's like synchronizing between PCs. Put your stuff in the briefcase case and keep it on your laptop drag it on a floppy disk and copy it over and it supposedly updated it all of them synced them but so we have active desktop here and let's see what the properties are see what kind of a display resolution we can get and this is a pretty snappy system for only 100 megahertz right now um we're doing 16 colors which it's bad, I don't think we have the right driver here, but we can go up to 7, 1024 by 768. Let's apply this. And this is a difference, you know, your monitor doesn't have a driver, you know, it's going to use the default. So without having the proper driver here on Windows 95, we might not even get like uh, the correct resolution. These are for existing models for CRTs and such. There was an LCDs back in the day. Um, this is a 24 inch monitor and I highly, I highly suspect that if I select any of these that we're going to have a, we're going to have a huge compatibility program problem here. No, and it made you restart for everything. But you could drag your icons around on the desktop like that. Um, properties, here's the properties of the system. Windows 95 edition 4.0.95 Charlie, that was the later re release. And again, I said I just did that because I need a little bit more driver support. Um, 
This is the onboard video right here from the system I'm not using, but this is my Trident Super VGA um, card. And here's a disk drive. And this is the flash drive that we're using. I got generic 48 times light on, which is cool because it picked it up. And there's two, there's ID controllers built onto the motherboard for that. And the sound card. And it basically picked it up. It, it's a Vibra 16, but that'll work for now. So you can create your uh, startup disk for Windows 95 here as well. Um, but anyways, let's take a look at the control panel. In the control panel here, you had your add new hardware, which will, you would add drivers and scan for hardware. You have the add remove programs, which here you have the following programs installed aside from Windows. And here at Windows Setup is where you can basically get and install what I showed you in the beginning if you didn't or needed to install extra stuff for the Windows 95. Um, display, obviously, just your display, calendar, date time, joystick for configuring your game joysticks, modems, mouse. Like they even had something for power management back in the day. Sounds, you can change and customize your beeps, bops, boops, all that. Um, for your various things, you can really go in depth with some of this. And I never really messed with it because I didn't really care about that so much. Um, change your hardware profile, configurations, performance. This is where you adjust your virtual memory, file system, graphics, full acceleration, file system, desktop computer. You can set it as server or mobile. CD-ROM. And you can troubleshoot and do a couple things here. Um, in case something wasn't really working or you had errors with IRQs and stuff. Um, then here's your device manager, of course. So the control panel is pretty much the same. Well, in some respects, of course. And if you come in here, you'll have the start menu. You get your settings, printers, and folder options, and active desktop. Um, you can have themes and profiles, program files, you have accessories, games, internet tools, multimedia. It came with a built-in CD player, which might have been big back in the day. Multimedia. So, media player. Media player is where you play your movies. I think you can even play um, CDs, but it was very rudimentary. Very rudimentary. System tools. You had a defrag program. System monitor, resource meter, uh, inbox repair. You can compress files to save space, but it slowed down your, your files if you're accessing. You even could back up stuff. Now, check out the system monitor. It is very, or was, or is very rudimentary. Charts, numeric kernel processor usage, rudimentary processor monitoring usage tool. Startup. Um, then here's your DOS prompt for MS-DOS. Appearance. You can have screen savers too. Like the flying objects. Preview. Like, let's see if it works. I like the flying windows thing in the background. Flying through space. Really cheesy stuff, but hey. 3D pipes. If we come over here and open up my computer, and if we come here, properties, we've got fat, two gig, and we've used up 379 meg. It has tools for error checking and back backing up and such like that. Um, now on the floppy drive, if you don't have anything in there, it's probably not gonna work. But if you pull up, uh, this you have copy disk and format but format you could actually create 
uh, and choose your disc size. Back in the day, there were multiple disc size, so it accommodated both quick erase, full. Uh, you could copy over system files, which means you could boot with the DOS files, or DOS rather. And that's about what we had here. I'm going to try to get some games to run now. So uh, I got this Packard Bell system up and running and I, I was thinking, what games do I have to play that are 95? Base for Windows 95. Oh yeah, I have this, the original one. Original Red Alert, Red Alert Command and Conquer. And I have the discs. So let's see if we can play it. Or, you know, install it, see how far we can get. I mean, this is so much fun back in the day, playing head-to-head, -head, you know, with your friends. So let's see if it'll choke. Huh. Graphics driver is not good, but let's install it and uh, go from there. Now it's supposed to take up like 57 meg or something on the hard drive. And you had to have the disc to run this. Yeah, C95 edition. Wow. I saved this disc from 90, from all the way back in the day. It's amazing. Who does that? I, do, I did that. All right, well, let's install. I think the minimum specs was for this was a Pentium 75 and hmm, 8 meg of RAM. It's copying over a DirectX version, so that's DirectX 3, everyone. DirectX 3. <laughs> I don't even know if this uh, Trident video card can play. Oh, yeah, so uh, yeah. We want to do this. We're going for the gusto. Trident Super VGA. Yeah, well, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. See, look, it looks pretty cool. I mean, I like, I like how the old school bars are for your CD and your drive, and it tells you if you're getting low down here. I mean, that's so old school. I'm, I remember that with like such fondness, I guess. I mean, but this is an awesome game. And it's cheesy looking by today's standards, you know, compared to like something like Starfield or whatever. But hours and hours of wasted fun times on this game. Oh my gosh. Comment below if this was one of your favorite games back in the day. Well, I can install it, but that doesn't mean I'm going to be able to run it, so let's see how it goes, shall we? Back in the day, it came with like this um, hierarchy chart and how to build your units. There's like a little quick guide key in the order to build your units and what got you what. And then these were all the uh, costs for building it. And I still have this little card to do that for the original game. So yeah, um, maybe I am a super nerd. Okay, so like, why do I need this? It's part of the game, but I don't need it. And yes, they have the remastered versions of this game today, but they're meant for a normal up-to-date operating system. But this is a 95 version. So, one of the few games that I have that will run on this, so. Look at this, you can restart in MS-DOS mode. Can't do that on uh, Windows 10 now, can you? Back in the day, when you go to the program menu and you went to Westwood, that's who made it, and you'll see you have Red Alert under here and then you have the options here for internet services where you could play online with your friends, multiplayer, through your dial-up, 
or even on your local area network if you had one. And then they had a 95 edition and then they had a DOS version of this as well, which was amazing because it shows you how old it was. You can even edit maps and make your maps to play with your friends. Now the 95 version crashed to a video driver problem. Let's see if the DOS version runs. Because sometimes these older video cards, one way or the other, you know, might work. It didn't work for Windows. But DOS might work. The specs were actually a little bit lesser to play under DOS. So I have like a sound blaster, right? And it is normally you would go with a generic sound blaster if you didn't have your specific model under here. And I have a sound blaster 16 Vibra. Um, so if this doesn't work, I have to go back in and choose this one down here because that's what you had to do. It's a guessing game back in the day, but normally choosing Sound Blaster was your, your safe bet. And then you had to test it, test your IRQs. Let's test it. I guess it just tests to see if there's an interrupt problem or IRQ problem, like if there's a anything else is using that so I'm not hearing any sound oh wait it is <laughs> all right guess it worked are we really gonna play this on this jalopy revive from the dead Packard Bell I hope so I hope we're gonna do this this game was awesome back in the day all right so yes it's correct yes Sound problem initialized. Kind of sounds like the guy, the computer, the AI from Iron Man, right? Enough of that uh, pixelated cinematic, I say. Uh, blast from the past. Let's see if we can play the darn game, shall we?
you can speed up the gameplay too, make it a lot faster. But so that game was fun, even though I suck at it. But yeah, you can play that game, no problem. Um, DOS mode though, probably uh, drivers with um, you know maybe the video card I have probably, but it works fine in DOS so. Well, we got this old, junked Packard Bell system. The Packard Bell 409 Legend CDT or whatever. Yeah, the CDT. And I can't even find the specs on my pet. Through an Opinium 133 megahertz that's only running at 100 because I can't find the jumpers to bring it up to speed. Um, through in 32 meg of uh, fast page um, RAM. Trident video card and a Sound Blaster Vibra 16 ISA card in there. And then we threw in a compact flash to IDE adapter and plugged it in with a two gig compact flash verbatim. Loaded Windows 95 and uh, brought the thing back to life. Yeah, I could probably fart around and get the jumpers to work. Maybe get the system up to 133, maybe 166. But, you know, this is the max it's gonna do. And the fact that the battery is soldered to the motherboard, well, that's another problem. You can see the 3D pipes in the background for the stupid screensaver that they had. At least one of them, but. I like to go back to the past and look where the operating systems came from, how they evolved. And believe it or not, even with these specs, Windows 95 in general, the way it sits, is a pretty snappy operating system. It's lightweight, and I like how you have that compatibility to run DOS games as well. It was a fun learning project for me to restore this partially. And it was also a nostalgic fun time for me to go back and experience what 95 was. And if you grew up with DOS, and then Windows 3.1.1, and then 95 came out, yeah, it was a huge deal huge deal you it, it gave you so much when it had the graphical interface and it also gave you the ability to run all your dos programs at least the majority of them and if you ever had one of these old computers even back then they were like 1500 or 2000 dollars which was not cheap comment below if you remember these games and these systems back then and how if you have a special place in your heart for windows 95 and these old junky packer bell computers that still work <laughs> Thanks for coming along with me on this journey and this restoration and revisiting what Windows 95 was like back in the day and testing a game, Red Alert, their first one, Command and Conquer Red Alert. And thanks for watching Remember This Tech.